Greetings everyone and welcome to the Thousand Week Reich mod, in which I'm your host, British Mr. Mocha Lover. And before we get too far, uh, the mods are using, as you might have just seen me at the top of the screen there, we're using Play of the Peace Conferences, the State Chester Tool mod, as well as the Thousand Week Reich, only three mods, but Britain in 1952, the darkest hour. To say that the last decade and a half has been a disaster for Britain and the world would be no exaggeration. It stunned the world when German panzers blitzed through the Ardennes, or Ardennes and circled the Allied forces in Belgium and caused a rapid collapse of France. Britain was defended by her navy in the channel, but all could see that the, with Britain alone, her army lost, and the end were jackboots marching across Europe. Little hope of success remained. An armistice was signed, maintaining the status quo between the Axis powers and the UK, although though allowing a continued Italian occupation of the British Somaliland. The humiliation of 1940 proved to be disastrous to the UK's global standing. Imperial subjects questioned the power of the British Empire, especially as Japanese forces seized large tracts of colonial territory in the Far East. Though victory against Japan came with cooperation with the US, the damage was done. Unrest broke out and rapidly escalated across India, forcing a humiliating uh, the rapid transfer of power and withdrawal of British forces as British authority crossed what remains of the Empire wavers. All the while, as the world watched in horror as the Wehrmacht butchered its way across the Soviet Union, German forces stood only 20 miles away with only a fragile armistice holding them back. The ruling conservative government, having already forced out Churchill after the disaster at Dunkirk, was voted out and replaced by Labour under Attlee. Today, Britain remains a scar but stalwart final frontier bastion of freedom in Europe. The Transatlantic Toronto Accord Alliance gives Britain valuable allies as the U.S. takes up the torch of leading as a leading defender of democracy. And her still impressive navy guards the seas, but barbed wire still lies the beaches, and conscription remains in force for the foreseeable future. With the Germans seeing signs of serious instability, the possibility of a restarting of the war seems likely. Britain, though battered, is ready. Britons will never be slaverinos. Cool, and we're led by uh, Clement Attlee. Now, we are led by the Labour Party with Social Democrats. And before we get too far, we always want to make sure what GDP ranking we are when we begin and hopefully end. And we're ranked fourth in the world, just behind China and a little bit ahead of what is known as Free France. Well, maybe not Free France, but at least France. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? I'll be honest with you, I've not tried this off screen at all, so I have no idea what's going to happen, except I hope we do well. The Navy, the Air Force, or the Army. Uh, Air Force, and I've already set most most things up off screen already, so we can just kind of go straight on in. Actually, that's not too bad. More production, escort efficiency, new army reduction. Let's go with the British Army. The British Army is the land branch of the armed forces. Due to this, it's important that we look carefully at this branch. For the tutorial, a GDP mechanic, UN mechanic, I'm ready to play. I don't want to know what's going to happen. And what type of national spirits do we have? Now, British stoicism. We have the Commonwealth of Nations, London, and a new era, huh? UN Council, memories of Dunkirk. Ooh, that does not look good. Economic downturn. Ooh, that's not good. Imperial instability. Oh, that's still not very good. And we also have national high debt. High national debt. Oh. Oh, and we have no fuel as well. But what else is new? London in the new era. The sun dawns on the smoggy London sky, just as it has done for thousands of years, illuminating a bustling, dirty metropolis of seven million bajillion people. Its many ancient monuments still stand proud, though darkened by a suit, reminding them of a time when London stood as a proud sea and earth capital of an unconquerable global empire that, of the likes of which had never been seen. These days, London is not the preeminent city of the Western free world. <coughs> Or that of Europe. Its people, however, are still proud of their city as they clamber onto double-decker buses or down into the underground tunnels to make their way through work every day. Even as the ever-looming threat of a Nazi threat, still only 200 miles away from the center of London itself, hangs over Britain, her people not fearful but eternally apprehensive. London may have lost much of its global shine, but its strength remains, and as long as its ancient buildings stand, the spirit of Londoners and Britons will never be extinguished. Still the capital of the world in spirit. And right now we're building a bunch of civilian factories. My God. Gosh, never mind. We're not building jack squat, basically. Uh, actually, ooh, maybe we should make some divisions. Our infantry divisions are like this. They're 20 combat width, which is pretty nice, actually. But it's pretty okay. Not too bad. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? Oh, can script some British boys. Our divisions are actually pretty decent as well. They're not quite 10, 20, blah, 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 20 combat width, but hey, that's all right, because we actually have quite a few of those guys already. We have two divisions of uh, these guys. Not bad, and I kind of like military police because it gives you 24 more defense. It's kind of nice, actually. And we have some Marines, but maybe we'll train two divisions. How about that? Two divisions of Marines. Not too bad. The Bengal Truce. Goodbye, old man. Egyptian martial law. Cairo fire. Recently, a battle instigated by the Egyptian aggressors threatening British territory ended with British victory, but the people of Egypt have expressed their unreasonable discontent by burning European-associated properties in Cairo. The British government has been alerted, and the British people are shocked by such uncivilized barbarism. Now, I'll be honest here, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. 
really have no idea. I don't ever pay attention to Britain at all. Just probably to the dismay of some of one of my chat mods and my Discord server. But, hey, um, Britain is Britain. I'll put it like that. And not much else is going to be said about that. Okay, then. Um, I'm not sure. If, do, we have, do we end up going to war with the Egyptians? Just in case, we're going to do that. Issue a strong protest? Might as well. And these other five divisions... Supply, obviously, is not very good down here, but we'll do what we can. Cool. And we have no fuel anyway, so... And we're trying to move our navy around. Air's, oh, and we're also training a lot of planes here, so... Lots of exercises. We're getting too chunky here. We need more exercise. Anniversary of Victory Day. Seven years have passed since the Empire of Japan signed unconditional surrender to the U.S., U.K., and our Commonwealth allies. The Operation Downfall was an astounding success, but many question the cost of such a victory. Controversy has risen in recent years over the methods used in the campaign against Japan, notably Allied usage of strategic bombing. Sir Arthur Harris, current Governor General of the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland, and the former commander of British bombing operations over Japan, has defended actions in the war going as far as saying that the Japan th thought they could bomb everyone else and not reap the role win. Tensions are rising globally with the German Reich and Toronto Accord. With nuclear, nuclear technology advancing, we can only hope for the best. Let's hope we won't have to do it again. We're gonna bomb up more, up more people. Oh. Uh, these guys have exploded, huh? Can I send you volunteers? No, oh man, I wanna send volunteers. As long as they're not our allies, the king is dead. Well, we start off great, don't we? It is with the greatest sorrow that we make the following announcement. It was announced from uh, Sandringham in 1045 today that the king has passed peacefully away in his sleep earlier this morning. The king's elder daughter has now immediately assumed the throne as Queen Elizabeth II. She was staying at Clarence House with his, loyal, his royal highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, upon which she heard the news. The new queen was to take part in the Commonwealth tour later this year. However, this news has cast uncertainty into those plans. Now the king, who was the nation's most faithful, constant, diligent servant, had, takes his rest. Britain mourns. Oh, well, we got that political power. And, well, the king's dead, along with the queen. Passing the Queen, the Duke of Windsor returns. The Duke of Windsor has returned to Britain from his residence in Florida to attend the funeral of his brother, the late King George VI. However, this has not stopped him from making impromptu comments about politics. The former king has made a few critical remarks about the Labour government, which has only recently lost her parliamentary majority. The Duke is also eager to note the fast rise of Sir Oswald Daddy Mosley's union movement, which has gained some seats in the recent by-elections. The Duke of Windsor stated that this situation provides the British people an opportunity to bring change. They cannot let it go to waste. Meddling in politics? How unregal! Oh, the Irish are independent? Hmm. Hmm. And atomic bomb in Germany, eh? Oh, it looks like Ireland has a generic focus and that's okay with me. Authority demands self-rule. It appears that the arrangements we've made with Dakar are beginning to erode. The exiles and natives of the French Authority, our informal puppet governments in West Africa, are demanding a greater measure of self-rule. They call for free elections within the Authority to allow democratic governments to be formed rather in the place of an increasingly brutal and unstable colonial regime. They argue that decolonization is inevitable and that British should do the noble act of allowing French Africa to decide its own future for its own people. French Authority, huh? Oh, wait, they're a puppet of us. Oh, okay. Grant them democracy? Pretend that we support them. Hmm. Nah. I'll be honest, I don't know which way I want to go, so. Uh, the Norwegian thought. Oh, people killing each other. Cool. Oh, a democratic government is a counterweight to any emerging dictator. By having to gather support in order to stay in power, functional democracy must stay constantly must constantly reform and adapt to fit different situations. With each reform passed, the government can ensure stability for, while forwarding the political agenda. Meet with the unions. Get more political power, consumer goods. Weekly stability, that's not bad. Success or fail. Uh, welfare reforms. Passes or fails. Uh, agreement with oppositions. Um, national debt. Pay off debt number one. By paying off the first and large installment of our national debt, we can begin to reduce our total debt overall. Okay. The British Army. The recent history of the British Army is not a glorious one. The catastrophe catastrophic defeat of the Anglo-French forces to the Germans in the War of 1940 still lives on in the memories of army planners over two decades later. The disaster in Dunkirk, where most of the British expeditionary force fell into captivity after encirclement, haunts the army to this day. Beyond that, Britain's land forces have a lack of experience, having only taken part in a relatively small capacity in the war against Japanese soldiers compared to that to the American allies. However, while the ground forces have never traditionally been the core of the British armed forces, necessity has expanded them. Conscription remains in place, and the army remains on alert in case the delicate Anglo-German armistice is broken and invasion happens to in turn the British army to a modern effective fighting force though some something badly needs as another war in Europe looks more likely time will take time effort and resources we will return maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but let's see what we can do about other stuff maybe anything around here the general elections oh I guess we're having elections this year okay cool new army doctrine we need you mechanization focus combine arms combine arms efficiency support or maximize firepower you know what 
a new army doctrine. Dunkirk told us one thing. We need to reform these armed forces. It's time to reevaluate our doctrine. Oh. We'll see what happens. I kind of don't mind this. I would like to get more stability. So let's maybe do that one. We lose some consumer goods, but we don't have consumer goods. We get more political power, so... Or at least it pays itself. Does Do the Finns have their own unique focus tree? That'd be really cool if they did, because it seems like they do. They do. Holy crap. Failed union meetings? What do you mean? After Clement Attlee's meetings with the various labor unions, our attempts at reaching an agreement with the union leaders have failed. We have failed to secure a consensus on the matters of production and labor rights. This failure has impacted the government's public image and political power, made damages to, and made damages to society's stability. Terrible. Well... Maybe we won't go social democracy. I don't know. Archibald Sinclair. That's a weird name. Archibald, huh? Rob. All right. People are killing each other. U.S. It's a hydrogen bomb. Can we? Can we explode things? I want to explode things. That sounds like fun. Oh, look at all these people we got under us. I love it. The atomic. Oh, okay, I asked them. We're gonna blow things up. Operation Hurricane is finally complete. The first atomic weapon of British manufacturer has been finished and delivered to Montebello for testing. Final preparations are being made for its detonation. Congratulate the scientists. I love nuclear bombs. We have them. The Germans have them. The Americans have some big old bomberinos. Quizzling wins a struggle. Gulag revolts. Oh, not surprising. Oh boy. Well then. Death of Beria. Goodbye, Beria. Have a good day. Oh, we gotta get rid of civilian. Oh, we gotta spend our political power doing this. But stability is always good to get. So, and currently we have five research slots. But the president, or oh, prime minister, means. Oh, look at that. We had to do this. Yes, British control of West Africa. You bet your butthole. We're going to keep it. The Prime Minister, Clementy Attlee, has called a general election for June the 26th. It had become obvious that the Prime Minister could no longer hide the issues facing his government and has now decided to bring it to the people. This, however, has not stopped Mr. Attlee from facing criticism. Many of the political opponents, and even some of his own party, are criticizing the decision to hold an election so soon after the King's death. One MP exclaimed, Her Majesty has not even been crowned and you're asking her to appoint a new government? It is believed that Mr. Attlee can return his party to government, winning back his parliamentary majority and settling the ever-growing ideological split within Labour. However, Labour has been in power for just over 10 years now, and the general public may thirst for change, nonetheless. The campaign is starting, and candidates are ready, and so it begins. If you'd like to read about the general elections, I guess I'll read it. Atlee has lost his parliamentary majority, has been left with little choice, but a call general election. Oh, boy, oh boy. French authority secured. We have successfully postponed democracy within French Africa. Despite having native disgust and international displeasure, the protests are dying down, and the colonial experiment appears stable for now. We aim to convene or continue the current British-sponsored regime in West Africa and eventually decolonize West Africa in the ideal British image, other than the French ideal of decolonization. We had to do this. So we could go with Mosley as an Easter egg path added for fun. It is player-only content. It's not accounted for the rest of the game, and playing Mosley will likely ga cause game-breaking issues proceed at your own risk and enjoyment. The Labour Party, the Butler's Conservatives, and a hung parliament. Oh boy. The death of uh, Stanford Cripps. Many within Britain are more are in mourning today as news emerges of the death of well-respected social statesman and economist Sir Richard Stafford Cripps. After suffering from recurrent illness for many years, his family has announced that he has passed away peacefully in his sleep. Or at least in the early hours of this morning. While some would be quick to point out the reasons for disliking the man, naming the controversy he caused within the Labour Party in the 30s, none can deny his left-wing policies as Minister for Economic Affairs and Chancellor of the Exchequer greatly alleviated the economic downturn in Britain and set the bedrock for the welfare state in Britain. A small personal funeral of family and friends is to be held in the coming days in the small village of Sapperton, Gloucestershire. Truly a sad day, but he's dead. New focus, shall we? Oh, we can't even select these guys. Okay, so we probably just select them later on, maybe, but... Oh, actually, we need you? Not bad, the Royal Air Force might not be bad to do. The Navy. Well, the Navy's probably pretty good to do as well. As an island nation, our most important military asset is the Royal Navy, which at one point confidently sailed in all the seas of the Earth. However, with this strange new world, has brought us new challenges, and our, our, Navy, blah, our Navy has yet to change in order to meet them. Cool. Kicks our biochemical weapons? Oh, I like that idea. Maybe we should do that. Pay off debt. Is there anything about work? Nothing about elections. Um, we still got a few months out. We got like two months. All right. Well, goodbye, Algeria. We have the other part of the Labour Party, the Socialists, but made a bloodbath. The uh, Habil Khamet debuts. At London Heathrow Airport, a commercial aircraft accelerates along the runway, an increasingly common sight before taking off its journey towards jo Johannesburg, South Africa. However, this flight is anything but ordinary as a familiar drone of propellers is replaced by the drone of jet engines. After a long and costly development and testing period, the de Havilland Comet, the world's first jet airliner, has taken off its first commercial flight. Undoubtedly, this is a great achievement for Britain and helps propel our civil aviation capabilities into a new jet era ahead of any country, but inevitably competition will follow. 
fellow. A triumph for Brit British engineering. Cool. Former Prime Minister speaks out. The former Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, has released a statement in the midst of the election campaign. Mr. Churchill, who has never been a stranger to the controversy, attacked the main two party leaders of, of Mr. Attlee. He warned of the plunge into social regimentation and certain restriction, as well as condemning his former colleague, Mr. Butler's apparent betrayal of conservative values. Churchill had also spoke out against Sir Oswald Mosley, of which he said of his union movement brings a mere reclamation of the old fascist black shirts of the 30s. As a closing statement, Churchill asked who is courageous enough to stand for Britain and her empire, calling for a new political movement to represent Britain in a new uncertain era. Mr. Churchill is still a member of Parliament and has made no indication of stepping down. The old dip diplo dipsomaniac fool can blabber all on as he wants. But we're going to focus on the Navy because we could really use more fuel. Welfare reforms. Um... All right, Egyptian Revolution in 52 and Egyptian Republic. Oh, that's not bad, maybe. Well, what do we want here? Do we get we lose political power or we lose political power? I don't like either one of these. But let's do some welfare reforms. Is this a good thing to do? I have no idea. We'll see what happens. Now I got elected in India. If only India was still under us. <sighs> Big sense. All right, so we've got military construction as well. We'll grab some extraction. We've got two more things here. Obviously, we've got all this first line done. We're doing some synthetic oil experiments. And we're going to grab some more decryption as well as encryption. Because I like that stuff because it helps our soldiers in combat, I believe. If I remember correctly. And we're barely building anything at all. Mm. Hey, look. Another division or so. Oh, another four divisions. Nice. Led by Francis Festing. Hello, Francis. Hello. Gloucestershire. Spain wins the EFC. Deploy in what we probably would call Scotland. Cool. And we get... Oh, Marines. Nice. Oh, at least one Marine. Singapore transferred. Oh, no. Another crack in the British Empire. That's not good. Oh, what happened here? Wait. Why did you all three... What? No, I didn't say you go all three. I just said one of you guys. What is wrong with you, game? What is wrong? The communique from Malaya is simple and brief. With the rising of the official flag upon the grounds of the Legislative Assembly complex, the young colony is officially transferred, or is officially in the hands of London. A direct crown colony once more. Little changes in truth for the residents of the city. The naval base swarms with the tonnage of the empire, and the city itself is vibrant with the lights and glamour of any commercial hub. In Malaya, however, the situation is very different. An already overburdened colonial administration is close to bucking under the expensive tariffs of Singaporean imports and exports. There are whispers of socialist intrusion within Singapore itself, and as the embattled Kuala Lumpur regime continues its long struggle, there are even whispers of a drawn-out defeat. There is, of course, no comment from the emergency of principles rebels. Why would there be? A fractured Malay is a dangerous one, and Chin Peng is an expert in swimming troubled waters. As an old saying goes, all, un all under heaven is chaos. The situation is excellent. Very nice. The Federation of Malaya, we love it. Oh, wait. Can we help you out? Oh, yeah. We're going to send you Richard Hull. Well, we do have the Marines down here. The 20 combat with. You know, there's probably... No, we have no mountaineers, so... Send in the Marines, I guess. Oopsie. Did I not... I did not... I guess I did not... Click on that one button. There you go. There we go. How many... 20. Okay, that's not good. Um... What do we have? 2,000 almost? Well... Good, good, good. Go. Cool. Oh, we have a fleet down here too. Nice. General election voting has closed across Britain. The votes are in. Many in the Britain suspect that Attlee will restore his majority. However, many believe otherwise. The Tories under Butler can make a snap comeback and begin undoing the reforms that Attlee has presented. Even some believe that Moses used the post-armistice climate to his advantage and pulled some wins. Nonetheless, the newly elected government of the UK is... Ooh, boy. Hold on. Before I do anything, Moses... Ooh, unstable government. I like that. No clear majority. Hung parliament, huh? Before we make any snap decision here, we got to take a look at what's going on. Oh, we need to begin a recovery. Oh, okay, we need to do that. Uh, let's see. What do we, if, we, if we're hung, what does that mean? Hmm. Sinclair resigns. Historic merger. Two leaders. The fifth national government. Oh. Store order. Atli must go. Meet with the left, address liberal infighting, the festival of Britain, refuse the NHS, more autonomy, the perfect system. Huh, our destiny? Alright. Or we go with the conservatives. Now obviously, as you can tell by the title of this video and who's on the thumbnail, I've, uh, you know who we've chosen. But, well, maybe you know. 
The knives are out. Mr. Butler's mandate. The Magic Circle's group. Our friends across the Atlantic. Well, I'll probably play Britain like a total of four times. So, why would we choose this one? A nation Britain. A traditional Britain. Never had it so good. That's not bad. I like that. Or we go with a labor. Labor manifesto. Future of the party. Oh, boy. Guide skill. Bavanites. Ooh, we heard. Ooh. Um, nuclear question. Now, I don't want to go with Mosley with my first one playing as, you know, Britain here. I know that some people want me to go... There's there's people who want me to go down every single route here. Like, literally every, both routes. All four routes, so. I think, you know what? I think this one looks the most interesting, but... I think we might just continue with Atlee. Just because I think that's pretty much the tried and true way. And with other campaigns that I'm doing currently, I'm not too socialist in those. Or, you know, Labor Party version or Social Democrats. So, we're going to go with... This one. Cool. A renewed mandate. The British people have reaffirmed their desire for a Labour government. We can use this popular support and momentum to assure that our legislative agenda is moving along. Labour wins UK elections. The Royal Navy. Once upon a time, the Royal Navy was an undisputed leader or ruler of, of the waves. Stronger than the next two navies combined. Today, while Britain remains a formidable naval power, that is no longer the case, with command of the high seas having passed it in large part to the Britain's ally in Washington, D.C. Britain's once invincible navy prestige, too, is damaged. With the lackluster performance in the early stages of, of the Pacific War being only partially rectified by... Later, more successful joint action with the U.S. against Japan, of course. Britain's navy is still very large, more often enough to guard the channel and its shores and make any German invasion very, very, very difficult, but many of its ships are old, and the fleet as a whole is in need of reforms and modernization. True co naval conflict with Germany more than the minor skirmishes of the 1930s and 1940 war will require Britain to thoroughly prepare its fleets so that with her allies she can rule the waves once more. We will return. I'll we'll see what happens. More description? Nice. Got some decryption. And actually, at this point, we're going to keep doing the land auction with combined operations. Yeah, we might as well, since we're already going down it, so that's not bad. And where are we at? You guys come up here, maybe? Uh, I, I chose this just because I know there's a big river here. Or there's at least a river, so. And then I did not want to send infantry down here, too, so. Do we have air superiority down here? Yes. Congo Rebellion Crush. Cool. Uh, maybe send these guys down here, then. Nice. If we could just, like, walk around them, that would be really good, so... Oh, maybe not. Um, I don't like the way this looks. Can you guys actually win here? P PPS elected? No. Um, I don't like the the way this looks, so... Uh, yeah. Can we throw any more planes here? I'm, I'm seriously considering cutting you down to half. Get rid of that. Get, we need some tactical bombers or something here. Um, what do we have? Fighters... Guys, we have only 10 here. Um, this is a bug, I guess. There you go. And... There we go. Maybe we should have plugged these guys a little bit closer, but that's alright. I guess we'll get some ground damage. We're trying to denounce the Vietnam. We'll see. That's pretty normal, though. Let's grab some encryption. That'd be really good. Uh, they could probably just kill off Malaya here, which would not be very good for us. Agree with the opposition. Uh, oh... What is that? Commit troops to Malaya? Eh. Wow, you can have uh, 10,000 soldiers. I would like to get to early mobilization. Anything here? Conglomerate, production growth, resource efficiency gain, Leo computers. Eh, that's not bad. That's really not bad, actually. Kingdom of Morocco's gone. British Motor Corporation. Not bad, either. Spanish victory up there, but we're going to save our PP right now. And we get 0.68 every day. Not bad. We're suffering attrition up here, which is not ideal. Are we out of guns? Oh, don't tell me we're out of guns. We're out of guns. God dang it. Labor's manifesto. With a new Labor government in power, the British people have given Labor a mandate to lead the nation forwards, and the party has presented its manifesto. During the election, the Labor Party promised to bring down unemployment, increase production, to reduce the overall cost of living, and to bring a just society. With the welfare state having been established in recent years, Atlee's government promises to continue these reforms to bring safety and prosperity to all people. Both Labor and Conservatives campaigned under promise to, uh, to protect Britain from the German threat. But it remains to be seen how well this new government will fare with the recently rising tensions threatening to bring that issue back into the front forefront. A renewed mandate. Followed up with what? Uh, we should probably begin our recovery, honestly. Yeah, future of the party. 
Let's do our recovery. The war brought about a great deal of destruction in the economic nodes of our country. If we do not devise some sort of plan to repair the damage that has been done, Britain will cease to be a significant economic power and our people will suffer for it. So that will be good. Yeah, the economic stuff is not very good for us. But it could be a lot worse. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's any way we can actually move around here and do well. I mean, I'll keep looking around to see if we can do well. Actually, send, uh, sending tanks in here would, be, would have been a really bad idea. Man, German spacecraft. Shocking. Well, for, for reforms past. And I just got myself cut off. Well, bad words. Being one of our government's many agendas, and despite the opposition's strong stance, our efforts in reforming the welfare system has passed the legislative body. This is a truly great political victory, and could definitely improve our government's approval rating with the newly reformed welfare programs. Clement Attlee has declared this as the Labour Party's greatest achievement in the UK's political history. Good work. Social democracy, political power, nice. I've got enough political power to do this. Very good. Just hold for now, and we will have these guys re-encircled. And actually, I'm going to attack right over the river. Why? Because Marines get a... Well, don't have as much of a debuff when attacking over river. Actually, how much of a debuff do we have? Uh, breakthrough's low, but down. Attack goes up. Malay requests our support. Dispatch, Central Office of the Commonwealth. Representative of R Malayan Federation, please acknowledge upon receival. We have, as you no doubt, been informed, encountered significant resistance from our territories in the eastern half of our fair peninsula. I will spare you the details of political vacuum, communist agitators hiding in the never-ending bush, and executions of dissidents, and the beastly beast business that is endemic to all peasant risings. Our efforts to contain this chaos has not been entirely fruitless, but alas, the harvesters of the crop of peace are ever fewer with each passing day. We are assured that the armies of the Commonwealth are open to all who desire to maintain business of peace uh, in the world edging towards war. It fails, falls to me to plead with your country's benevolent leadership to open your own coffers for the support of our liberty abroad. The Federation of Malaya was birthed in the hopes that this little outpost could become a great force for liberty in Asia, and your support can make the difference between a civilized continent and one fallen to the eternal savagery of the Reds. So, to sum up the reports of my military commissioner, we are in dire need of manpower for our battalions and equipment for our civilian militias. I have attached a letter of standardized ammo, weapon specifications, and uniform regulations. Yes, I am aware that this is a particular peculiar demand, but the number of men we have lost from inappropriate jungle fatigues in the past year can hardly be believed. We will send over some words of encouragement. Ah, give them some words. Like, go home, and go to sleep at an appropriate bedtime, and uh, take your daily vitamins. You know, words of encouragement. We're about to get encircled again. Um, I don't like this, so let's see if we can circle these guys really. The Greek Civil War? Oh, cool. Oh, we're getting attacked. The revolution in Bulgaria? Everything's falling apart. And that's all right. Well, they left. Can we... Oh, don't lose Kuala Lumpur. Don't lose Kuala Lumpur. You dinguses. Einstein visits Israel. Last time I saw this event, uh, he didn't come back from Israel. Can we seriously not win here? Social Democrats win. Okay, good. No, oh, did we kill them off? Or did they just leave? They might just left. Um, uh oh. Oh, we got this stuff. Uh, currencies fire, and Vietnam withdrawal, paying resolutions, voting no, 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 no. We're gonna vote no. We can't vote again. I can't, oh, you can only vote once? Man, I wanna vote like 16 times. Encryption. Nice. Let them struggle a little bit. Get in there. Oh, actually, the horse is going in there already. Nice. Okay, are we moving in? Are we moving in? Come on. Horses, are, where are you going? Seriously, like, are you moving up there or not? Uh, current resolution. No. Well, why, am I, why is that popping up then? Vietnam resolution fails. Cool. I'll kill them off. As long as they don't break over here, that'll be good. Give us time. Give us a little bit more time. Grow rubber. Meet with the unions. Use more stability. Don't tell me they're doing last stand, are they? They're not. That's good. Come on, guys. The road is open to Kota. Successful union meetings. After Clement Attlee's meetings with the various labor unions, we have successfully reached a consensus between the workers and the government. This is going to ensure a smooth, undisturbed production cycle for the next few weeks, buying ourselves valuable time and efficiency within our factories. Nice. Very nice. Oh, actually, let's just go up to here. Okay, then. We still have any factories. Trying to kill enemy divisions is kind of a pain in the butt. I wish the range were better, but at least our guys are learning. Actually, we probably should put you under a new field marshal. Ne Neville Brown John? Is that really his name? Brown John? Let's go. I'm going to get reinforced right next after this, probably. 
Oh, they woke, they did it. Okay, whoo, we feel good now. This guy didn't actually suck up too hard. Nice. We stand victorious. We can feel pretty good about this episode then. Alright, let's do some, uh, let's move that because we can. It's very, very nice. Beginner recovery. And we probably can only go down one of these routes because private hesitation. Actually, I, oh no, yeah, we can't do that one. Nationalization program. Northern industry. Mm, lots of factories. Housing for the nation. Centralized planning and committee. Invest in our future. Uh, or this one. Military factory construction speed. Invest in civilian industries. Nationalize. Remove civilian investments. Oh, you actually just get rid of that immediately, huh? A lot of foreign. We don't. Investments. Uh, so. Uh huh. It's not bad. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll leave it up to you guys. Should we do National Works Project or should we do a nationalization program? Please let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm open to either one. It doesn't really matter to me, so. Yeah, and if we do either one, should we do Housing for the Nation or Centralized Economic Planning? Or if we choose a nationalization program, should we do We Don't Need Them? Or should we allow for investment? Please let me know in the comments, of course, below. I'm not sure where else you put it, but who knows? Let's do Future of the Party. The Labour Party is a coalition of several left-wing elements, and not all of them are in agreement with each other. In order to govern, the party must unite under the leftist faction, led by Andrin Bevan, or the rightist faction, led by Hugh Geiskel. Geiskel. Yeah, that's his name, Geiskel. Which we, I think I usually see Geiskel win, but hey, we'll see what happens. Especially once the Germans go kaboom. I love the Marines. Remember today in Flanders fields the poppies blow. Between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. Today, November 11th, marks Remembrance Day. The day marks the date in which the armistice to end the Great War became to effect. Ever since 1919, a memorial observance for all those who had fallen in war had been marked on this day annually. A two-minute silence on the 11th day of the 11th hour of the 11th month when the guns fell silent. We will remember them. Oh well. Death advisement, huh? Do we elect his president, huh? So we have the state of Israel. Do they have unique focus tree led by David Ben Gurion? Oh, no, no, no unique focus tree yet. Oh, big sadness. Big, big sadness. Hey, let's build more stuff, though. Could use more guns. Yeah, we could always use more guns to put down the natives, I guess. This, wait, this is it. Can I say that? This is not Vicky, too. Eh, it's early enough. And it's late enough in the in the video that it doesn't matter. Well, Jijikowski? Oh, well. Goodbye, Jijikowski. Anything else? 55? Nope. Land options coming along. Let's improve our artillery. Why not? Actually, do we have any spare artillery for now? No, we don't. Of course not. Why would we? Feature the party? Well, that's as far as we can go with this. Victory for Zigarev. Oh, when's the change? Uh, so Kenneth, did they just peace out Nova Sibirsk and that other Chris Krasnoyarsk or something like that? George Oliver, health and safety. Uh, and Hugh Geitzko. Oh, is that the... Oh, he's a naive optimist. The Queen's first Christmas message. Each Christmas at this time, my beloved father... Oh, stop stop with that. Come on. For, uh, beloved father broadcasts a message to his people in all parts of the world. Today, I'm doing this to you who are now my people. His Majesty the Queen... Her Majesty the Queen has given her first Christmas message since ascending to the throne earlier this year. At Christmas, our thoughts are always full of our homes and our families. This is the day when num members of the same family try to come together or, if separated by distance or meetings, meet in spirit and affection by exchanging greetings. But we belong, you and I, to a far larger family. We belong, all of us, to the British Commonwealth and Empire. That immense union of nations with their homes set in all the four corners of the earth. Like our own families, it can be a great power of good, a force which I believe can be of immeasurable benefit to all of humanity. My father and my grandfather before him worked all their lives to unite our peoples ever more closely and to maintain its ideals which were so near to their hearts. I shall strive to carry on their work. Already you have given me strength to do so. For since my ascension ten months ago, your loyalty and affection have been an immense support and encouragement. I want to take this Christmas day, my first opportunity to thank you all with all my heart. May God bless and guide you all through the coming year. Merry Christmas. Even though it's on December 30th already. The Chancellor's position. With a new Labour government in power, the time has come to choose one of the most important ministers in the cabinet, the Chancellor of the Check here. The two main choices are available for Atlee. Andrew Bevan represents the left wing of the party, an old left proponent of democratic socialism. Hugh Geitzkel is the current chancellor and the other option for the new cabinet. In contrast to Bevan, Geitzkel on the right wing of the party is eager to move the party away from its old explicitly socialist roots and perform the party's drive away from nationalization. Oh, crud. Um, they're going with well, Truman, but Dewey's going to be there soon. Uh, actually, will that determine this? 
has completed. Uh, oh, so this one is either the Bevanites or the Gut Skills. Ooh, must be true, has completed the focus. It doesn't really matter which one, so let's double check this one. So the Bevanites, the Democratic Socialist Direction, Pragmatist Direction, Research Unemployment. Asserts employment associations main priority. Well, because this is the first campaign with Freeman with Geitskill, I want to have it pretty normal, so I'll probably go with Geitskill. Shall remain, which we might do the Bevanites later on. So the Geitskill, it's Hugh Geitskill shall remain chancellor. That's a 56 day focus for a single sentence. Cool. Improved working conditions. Uh, is this all going up at all? No, it's not. Agree with the opposition. Oh, encry encryption, nice. Decryption, nice. Land auctions coming along. We're getting our, some of our stuff done. We've got improved anti air, which is not bad, but eh, well, let's get some better tanks, shall we? And how about some. Oh, yeah, infantry equipment. Holy cow, we definitely got to improve that stuff. What is it down here, though? Chief of the AF Walls. Also, we're on patch or this for this campaign. For Thousand Week Reich version 0.2.2, .2, and of course, there's no historical version of this, so it is what it is. That stuff isn't bad. Oh, can we go to. No. Mm. Sub detection armor. I like that armor. Scapa Flow Royal Navy Dockyard. Consumer goods goes up, though, so I don't like that. Well, people have died, but what else is new? Turkestan dissolved. Rolls Royce looks not bad. The 1953 North Sea flood. Heavy storms in the North Sea have caused widespread devastation and flooding across mainland Europe on the North Sea coast as well as on the east coast of Britain. Sea walls have been breached and hundreds of miles of coastline flooded as 30,000 people are evacuated and thousands lose their homes entirely. It's estimated over 500 people have died. What a catastrophe. And that's all we're going to say about it. 3%, 2%, huh? That's not really worth it, I'll be honest. Rover Company. Reliability. I don't want to lose consumer goods, though. It's armored Spearhead. Decisive Battle. I kind of like that, because you get more stuff anyways. Organization's not bad. Guns and butter. Man, that's old. I remember using that in Hearts of Iron 2. Oh, she's fire. Indonesia's on fire. Let's vote yes. Exile the Dutch government. Here we go again. Hmm. Uh, engineers. Probably be pretty good to get. And some better flamethrowers. Why not? Very, very cool. And we need to build some nuclear reactors, probably. Anything here? Uh, oh, actually, kicks our biochemical weapons. Extend a piece. Voting no, voting no. Um, okay. Well, goodbye, then. Region-wide integration. Well, we might as well. Coup d'etat in Guatemala. Armor um, interoperability. Support companies. Yes, please, 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 please. How are guns looking? Not great, but they're getting a little better. And we will do a few more focuses, and then we'll call it an episode, shall we? Anything else on the screen here that's really different? Chancellor Geitzka. Hugh Geitzka has been selected as a Chancellor of the Exchequer, representing the right wing of the Labour Party, the Geitzkaites. He supports a mixed economy and reforming the party away from its old socialist routes. A new chapter for Labour. For Labourinos. A pragmatic direction. We are not a party which governs alone. There must be some sort of moderation on our ideals in order to keep the Tories and Mosleyites in line, unless they oust us from government. We lose political power. We only get 1.22 every day, which is okay. Not bad, but just okay. Actually, since we own that, we have enough rubber as is. We do not need to expand upon that rubber. No detachable magazines. Very nice. Let's grab some of this then. And maybe get some better uh, other stuff. Hey, the Fuhrer's dead. What? He's dead? Bye, Daddy Hitler. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't call him Daddy Hitler, but, you know, whatever. Ante Pavelic assassinated, huh? Oh, looks like someone wants to explode here. Wagon assassinated. Oh, look. Oh, they got this territory back, huh? Well, the NSDAP. All right, then. Better trucks? Why not? I want to see Germany go kaboom. The French Revolution. Queen Mary is dead. Today, Britain mourns the passing of a very great and gracious lady. Her Majesty Queen Mary has passed away peacefully in her sleep at Marlborough House. The mother and grandmother of sovereigns, Queen Mary lived through six reigns in her lifetime. Her husband and two of her sons became our king, and now her granddaughter is our queen. This is how we will remember her. A proud, charming queen, a lady of vigor to the last, so kindly and dignified a queen. Britain mourns. The old god just keeps dying away. Wow. Are you exploding? Oh, the Slavic Revolt. The grand funeral of Adolf Schmittler. Things are going to go kaboom, aren't they? Japan renounces the right to war. Oh? FF. Or EF. Huh. 
Okay, well, things are falling apart, which is kind of nice. But, you know, as long as we're not falling apart. Ethiopian uprisings. Oh, boy. Oh, man. I played as Hungry once. Oh, they're actually fighting these guys, too. Look at that. Yeah, Hungry, your bottle's going to get just destroyed here. I'm sorry. I've got to say it like that just because when I played as Hungry, it pissed me off, man. It really did, like, when that war started and I wasn't ready for it. Laurel and Hardy arrived for the UK tour. Laurel and Hardy, the for 30 years, two of the best-known funny man in films, has arrived in the UK for a performing tour for Stan Laurel, was born in Ulverston. This is a return to the country of his birth. It's been a while since their last film of the spring of 1946, yet this has not stopped trouble and laughter following them to every stage they step on. There's no news that this year has been a rather dismal one for Britain. Their rivals Stan and Aldi provide hilarity for us all. There's another nice mess you've got me into. Cool. Yeah. Romania is massive. Look at that. Rebirth of France. Serbian Civil War. Holy crap. Things are just falling apart. This is actually really huge. Holy crud. Yeah, that's a massive Romania. They're just only going to get bigger and bigger. I need to play Romania again sometime. But let us end with controlling inflation. The British economy must be kept salient. In order to do that, we must ensure that the pound does not lose its value due to inflation. But I hope you enjoyed our first episode playing as the United Kingdom with the moderate socialist or moderate Labour Party uh, candidate. And now leader or hopefully later, uh, Clement T. Atlee still. Cool. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will explore what else the Thousand Week Reich mod has for the UK. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.